Previously, the evolution in endothelial keratoplasty continues. Last year, our Don't Fold video demonstrated that our sheets glide technique of donor insertion in DSEG resulted in less endothelial damage than donor folding. Since then, we have been working on newer donor insertion devices. And now, the saga continues. Sila. Claire! A new device that can change the world. Give it to me. Over my dead body. All right, we can do this the messy way. Oh, no, 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 not the femtosecond finger. Oh, no, 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 no. Isaac, tell him. Wait, 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 wait. The prototype Donald I made, it's in my pocket. Good. Now I can blind the world. But still, you die. Hero! Nikki! She's not here. You all right? Let's go now. Wait, get Claire. Don't worry, I've got it. No! no! To stop Sila, we need a better device. We have to save the world from blindness. We need a new device to insert the donor through a 4mm wound. There must be no endothelial damage, no edges touching, and it must be easy to use. Hey, how about transparent plastic tube, which fits exactly into the wound so there's a complete seal. The donor can then be coiled up within the tube. Stupid! If you coil up your donor like that, you're bound to have the edges overlapping and rub off half your endothelium. Nice one, Nikki. Jessica's right. Okay, uh, I learned this double coil technique in cheerleading class. Double coil? Yes, so the endothelium doesn't touch. Great, Isaac, I need you to visualize the design. The endoglide is a disposable inserter which is devised for safe donor insertion in the safe and consists of a capsule glide, glide introducer, and a preparation base. Key principles underlying its development include minimal endothelial damage during donor preparation and insertion, simplicity in design and ease of use, and full surgeon control of the donor and a stable anterior chamber. Both anterior and posterior lenticules of the donor are first placed in the donor well of the base and a small amount of dispersive viscoelastic is added. The capsule glide, designed to fit through a 4mm incision and to accommodate a donor measuring up to 10 mm in diameter and 250 microns in thickness, is locked into position upside down onto the preparation base. Forceps are introduced through the glide to grasp the stromal edge of the posterior lenticule. Pulling the lenticule in automatically coils the donor into a double coil configuration with no endothelial surfaces touching. A glide introducer is then attached, sealing the back end of the capsule. The assembled endoglide is removed from the base, inverted the right way up and is ready for insertion. With an AC maintainer on to stabilize the chamber, the endoglide is fully inserted through the 4mm sclerotunnel, forming a complete seal of the wound. The sac forceps, introduced from a nasal paracentesis, then simply grasps the donor and pulls it in. The donor automatically uncoils and the endoglide is removed. A small air bubble is then injected beneath the donor to prevent descent onto the iris. Our initial laboratory studies in human eye bank eyes using vital staining with tripen blue and alizarin red suggest that endothelial cell loss with the endoglide is approximately 5%, comparing favorably with our published 32% loss with tackle folding and 9% loss with our previous sheets glide technique. We have initiated clinical trials with the endoglide. Our first patient was a 64-year-old Asian male with Fuchs dystrophy and cataract with 2100 vision. The donor after ALTK dissection is first refined with the coronet donor punch to a diameter of 8.75 mm. The posterior lenticule was 190 microns in thickness 
as measured by pachymetry. The capsule glide is inserted upside down onto the preparation base and lubricated with BSS. The donor is placed within the well and a small amount of dispersive viscoelastic is applied. Forceps are introduced through the capsule to pull the donor into the chamber. As the donor enters the chamber, it automatically forms a double coil configuration. The glide introducer is inserted, sealing the capsule. The assembled endoglide is now simply retracted from the base, inverted the right way up and is ready for insertion. In the recipient eye, phaco emulsification with IOL implantation is first performed through the 4mm sclerotunnel. Decimates membrane is stripped and all viscoelastic is then removed. With an anterior chamber maintainer on, the endoglide is then inserted through the sclerotunnel. A desec forceps inserted from a nasal paracentesis then grasps the donor and pulls it into the AC. The donor will spontaneously uncoil and the endoglide can be removed. A small air bubble is then injected beneath the donor to prevent descent onto the iris. Wound closure is performed and the AC completely filled with air. The desec procedure is then completed in the usual manner. On the first postoperative day, the cornea was crystal clear with no evidence of dislocation. At one week, best visual acuity was correctable to 2025 and an endothelial cell count was about 2500 with a cell loss of only 13.8%. Here is a second patient also with Fuchs dystrophy in which we performed phaco desake with the endoglide. Visual acuity at one month was 2040 unaided, correctable to 2030 vision. At one week, the postoperative endothelial cell count was 2,786 and compared to the donor cell count of about 3,000, this represented only a 9.1% endothelial cell loss. At one month, the endothelial cell count was about 2,600, representing a 13.4% cell loss, almost identical to our first case. We have since performed another two cases which have been equally successful. Our preliminary studies with the endoglide are encouraging and we are currently performing more cases of DSAIC with this device with a view to assessing clinical safety and efficacy and endothelial cell loss rates. The DSAIC revolution continues and we certainly hope the endoglide will help us save the endothelium. I think I need the endoglide.